it is my first movie, but no, I don't think there's going to be any problem with distribution because the film has distribution, and it did from frame one. I was very careful in that before I started making this movie, I ensured that there was a plan in place to distribute the movie. I don't have time to hustle. I edit Fangoria magazine. I write for many periodicals. I, I do music for films. I, I have three children, uh, so I'm very busy. Uh, I don't have time to be a hustler in that respect. So I wanted to make sure that although this was an experiment making a movie, the cost was low enough that if it didn't work out, then then okay, I'd chalk it up to a failure. But if it was going to work, I wanted to make sure that people would see it. And so Autonomy Pictures, TLA releasing, who funded the movie, uh, always intended for the picture to be seen by other human beings. Uh, so I was very lucky in that respect. Lucky and um, I will give myself credit in some degree to being a bit um, savvy and seeing some of the mistakes that other uh, independent filmmakers have made uh, where they're always on the hustle, always trying to get this movie seen. I've seen marriages unravel, I've seen people's lives get destroyed uh, based on the quest to get their movie seen by people. That's not for me. Shauna is incredible. I, I knew Shauna socially through my wife, Carrie, uh, who's also the co-star of Blood for Irina and, com and does some of the music with me in the film. Uh, but I knew Shauna socially. She was not an actress. She had a background in dance. And because of that, and because the film is a very physical movie and a silent movie, ostensibly, I needed somebody who had a physical presence. And I think with Shauna, you get that classic uh, beauty that, you know, the Roland films uh, or the, the Franco movies have, this kind of European beauty. In fact, Shauna is South African, but she has that look. But it's also, um, there's a real quality to it. You can see in Shauna's face something that's human, an intelligence, if you will, uh, a person that's seen the world. And I think that because the character of Irina is on her last legs, is kind of a, a dying star, if you will, I think Shauna captured that beautifully. And I plan to work with Shauna, if she'll have me, in every movie I make. Uh, why not? There's something unique about her. I feel like we've, we've created something together, and I want to keep exploring that relationship. I'm comfortable doing it all. Uh, I've always found that every form of communication harkens to music, and because I am a musician, I guess first and foremost, although I am a writer professionally, I find when I write, it's just music. When I uh, speak, you're trying to find the rhythm of communication that's also got a musical quality to it. Uh, directing, all you're doing is, is assembling an image, uh, putting together a scenario that has some kind of rhythm or some sort of tone to it. Uh, so to me, writing, directing, composing the music, whatever, it's all part of the same um, entity. Uh, and because these are the kinds of movies I want to make, I fully intend to, uh, going forward, again, handle all aspects of production with increasing confidence as I go. I'm always thinking of projects. I'm always thinking of something I can do. Um, I'm always thinking of the next move. And uh, when it comes to movies, I mean, I'm, I'm bitten by the bug. I made a little movie, a very small movie that people have seen. Some people like it. And uh, that has given me the confidence, again, to go forward and make more. There was a kind of a semi-sequel companion piece to Blood for Irene, a sort of a reinvention of that film called The Queen of Blood. Again, starring Shauna Henry, but um, a radical reinvention of the themes uh, and tone of Irina, something far darker and more abstract and more ambitious that we're in pre-production for right now, uh, waiting for a few ducks to get into place before we go. Uh, so that's the next move. I want to keep making these kind of allegorical, existential vampire films um, like some of my predecessors, I think, did, like Roland and, and Franco because uh, the themes that I want to explore about being alive 
are most uh, clearly exemplified in that genre, the vampire genre. And uh, I am fully, fully intend to stay within those parameters. Outside of that, there's a space werewolf movie, believe it or not, as ludicrous as that sounds, that I've been throwing around in my head for quite some time. And as crazy as it sounds, like werewolves in space, I, um, I, can, I can see it in my mind. I can feel it. And if I ever get the budget and the, uh, the time to do something like that, then I'd like to make a space werewolf movie. Hopefully, uh, someone doesn't beat me to the punch. Making Irina, I, we were very careful, uh, again, very practical when we were setting out to make this movie. Um, but we also left a lot of room for improv. That's very important to me is to say, well, here's what we want to do. And uh, if we veer off into other directions um, because we want to or because fate conspires against us, that's fine too. So there were many uh, crazy things going on making this film. Uh, first and foremost, it was freezing in February in Canada. Uh, we were very, very cold. Secondly, the movie really is experimental in the sense that we used several kinds of uh, consumer-based cameras, including an iPhone, which I dropped into the, the water, into the, and a big squall came out of the water and pulled my phone away, and uh, that was a bit crazy and intense. I dried the phone out, it was still on record, and I used some of that footage of the phone under the water in the film. Uh, if you get the DVD Blu-ray of Blood for Irina and listen to my commentary, you will further hear more uh, stories, and there were a lot of them, about the making of the film. Arguably, if you don't like the movie, arguably maybe more interesting than the film itself. I have loved movies since I was a baby, and that will never, ever, ever change. Um, and I have my heroes, George Romero being one of them, David Cronenberg, Werner Herzog, and again, the European filmmakers like Roland and, and Franco, Dario Argento. Uh, these are people whose films, uh, to me, are superlative examples of horror films that also work beyond uh, the limitations of the genre and become something else and become unique to their creators. These are auteurs of terror, if you will. Uh, so those influences are alive and well in Blood for Irina. Lars von Trier being a contemporary example of a filmmaker that I, I really, really like. Even Terrence Malick, believe it or not, if you will. Um, so those influences are, are in Blood for Irina, but again, there's still something else of me in there. You know, I, I lived in an area of Toronto for many years that was impoverished, and uh, there was prostitution, drugs, and I had an affinity, not an affinity, but a fascination with um, the nightlife. I was not part of that nightlife, but as an observer, I felt incredibly bad for a lot of these destitute women. And I wondered how they got where they got and where they went and why they were invisible. So that fascination about that underbelly is definitely the, the spine of, of Blood for Irina, even more so than any cinematic influence. Anyone who says they get involved in making movies uh, and says that they have no interest in making money is lying. If you want to make art and you don't plan on sharing it with the world, that's fine. But as soon as you share it with people and distribute it and try to get it seen, you want to do this as your job. Uh, and you can't live on nothing, on accolades or Facebook likes. So you want to make money. I'm not going to lie, uh, if the opportunity came to make a bigger film, if I had the creative control, I would do it. My Space Werewolf movie being an example. Uh, outside of that, I don't need money to produce the films I want to produce. And I don't need um, exorbitant overhead to tell the stories I want to tell. So. Um, I'm fully comfortable working in the low-budget, micro-budget underground, making these films on the side, outside of all the other things I do, uh, with the intention that 
eventually I'll make a dollar or two off that, fine. Uh, but these are personal movies, something I want to do. To me, the most important thing, whether it be big budget, small budget, or no budget, is that you have creative control and that you take responsibility for your work. Film is a collaborative process, I know this. Uh, by the same token, the less collaborators you have, the purer the work. I'm Chris Alexander. I am the editor of Fangoria Magazine. I'm also the writer, director, co-producer, co-cinematographer, editor, and composer of the film Blood for Irina. Hello from Canada. Thank you, Terror Weekend, for caring about what I do. I love what you do. Keep being weird, because normal is boring.